Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jan Madhya Sya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charatesu Avigya Swarat Jan Madhya Sya Yato Vayam Taratas Charatesu Avigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhukam satyam param di mahi. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original, living being. the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even great and are into As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra Paramo nirmatsaranam satam Vedyam vastavam atra vastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Prayer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subis Takshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kalpaturor galitam falam sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam ibhata bhagavatam rasamalayam muhur aho rasika buvibhavakaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desiretry of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Idiantaksto Hi Badrani Vidu Noti Suhit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from, from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta su su Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nastiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamaloba dayas chaye cheta etar anavidam stitfam satve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya Shiyante chasya karmani Jiste evatmanishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram Understanding of the Supreme uh, Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 17, verse number 36. Kali Ruvacha Yatra kwa vata vatsyami Sarva boma tavagyaya Lakshaye tatra tatrapi Tvam ati su sarasanam Translation by Srila Prabhupada O oh, your majesty, though I may live anywhere and everywhere under your order, I shall but see you with bow and arrows wherever I look. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The personality Kali could see that Maharaj Yudhisthira was the emperor of all lands all over the world, and thus anywhere he might live, he would have to meet with the same mood of the king. The personality of Kali was meant for mischief, and Maharaj Pariksit was meant 
for subduing all kinds of mischief mongers, especially the personality Kali. It was better, therefore, for the personality of Kali to have been killed by the king then and there instead of being killed elsewhere. He was, after all, a surrendered soul before the king, and it was for the king to do what was required. Sila Propadiki J. So the absolute value of having a strong, spiritually pure Vaishnava king is inestimable. You can't you can't you can't calculate how valuable it is because such a leader will protect the people from all kinds of degrading influences. This world today is full of many, many degrading influences. One is greater than the other. And this world today is full of hundreds and millions of Kalis, personalities of Kali. So we need strong leaders. And Srila Prabhupada was that strong leader. He had to put up with so much nonsense and find solutions for it, creative Krishna conscious solutions for all that nonsense that started right from the beginning of the movement. In fact, I'm going to talk about it extensively tomorrow. <clears throat> However, uh, Prabhupada prevailed because he was not mean. He was merciful, but yet he was as strong as a thunderbolt and he could be as soft as a feather. That is the hallmark of a genuine Vaishnava. So when uh, Chota Haridas, who was a brahmachari, he was asked to go and beg some special rice that one devotee lady had called Siki Mahiti. So it could be prepared nicely. And so, oh, I'm sorry, Siki Mahiti. Yeah, what was the name of the lady? The, the sister of uh, Siki Mahiti. What? Madhavi, yeah, okay. So he goes, knocks on the door of Madhavi, who was an old lady. And he asks her very humbly for some of the special rice that she has. But next to her was standing a very young lady who was very attractive. So while the brahmachari was talking to the, the sister of Siki Mahiti, he glanced at the girl. And there was more than a glance. There was a glance with a desire to enjoy her. Now, nobody knew about that except Lord Chaitanya, who is the super soul also. <laughs> so when he came back, Lord Chaitanya said, uh, I never want to see him again, which meant he couldn't come into the association of the Lord and also the devotees. Now, all the devotees, they were like shocked. And they tried to convince Lord Chaitanya that it was too, too harsh, but he would not relent. And he said, if you continue doing this, I'll just leave myself. So they kept quiet after that. So what did this boy do? He committed suicide. And then he appeared, not to everybody else, but to Lord Chaitanya. And he would sing for him uh, and glorify him. So Lord Chaitanya knew this. Nobody else knew it. And then he was pleased by him. So now, it <laughs> sounds like a really harsh story. However, Lord Chaitanya purposely did this to establish a standard that for anyone who's renounced, though, so a brahmachari is supposed to be renounced also. There are three, three of the uh, ashramas that are renounced. There's a brahmachari, the vanaprastha, and the sannyasis. The sannyasis have to be the most pronounced, and the brahmacharis have to be uh, relatively pronounced, but uh, strictly also. They cannot violate the 
from the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness that to be completely surrendered to the spiritual master and they have to sacrifice. And then the sannyasis, their dharma is to be very, very uh, renounced and strict and engaged in uh, what you, you would call constant austerities. And there are a whole bunch of rules that sannyasis have to follow. So anyway, that's one of the only chapters, I think it's in the uh, Antalila, it's one of the only chapters where Prabhupada writes a sequel to all the purports. In other words, he wrote all the purports, but then he writes a sequel to it. And he, he explains why Lord Chaitanya was so strict, because he, he said that, that sannyas is very serious uh, spiritual order and, and Krishna consciousness are very serious, brahmachari is very serious. And one cannot make a laughing stock of Krishna consciousness by misbehavior, especially the sannyasis. So, so after Lord Chaitanya did this, everyone was afraid to even think of sense gratification when they saw how strict he was with Chota Haridas. So he established the principle that renounced people have to be genuinely renounced. They cannot surreptitiously engage in looking or, or even thinking about sense gratification. Now, of course, we explained a couple of days ago that there are some benefits in Kali Yuga. That is, if you think of something sinful, you don't get the sinful result, whereas in previous ages you would. But when we talk about the renounced orders in the ashrama system, uh, it's, it's incumbent that anyone who dons the, the garb of a brahmachari or a vanaprastha or a sannyasi have to be very vigilant in the way they look at things and the way they think. So. And that was Lord Chaitanya's point, that uh, people who are supposed to be renounced have to actually be renounced and not uh, throw glances and thoughts and, and so forth. Because Krishna is in the heart of everyone as Paramatma, so he knows what, our, what we're doing. And so we can't hide anything. Okay, so in the same way, Kali understood wherever he would go, he would see Maharaj Parikshit, uh, in other words, he would see the mood and the, uh, let's say, observation of Maharaj Parikshit, who was ready to kill him. And he only, he didn't forgive him exactly. He, he followed the rules of Kshatriyas that you don't kill a person who surrenders to you. But he knew that there was nowhere in, his, in Maharaj Pariksit's kingdom that he could penetrate. And he had to be extremely careful because Maharaj, Maharaj Pariksit was uh, observant. So th this, is, this is what is required in a spiritual uh, society. That, uh, and at that time, he was king of the whole world, by the way, not just of India, but the whole world. So uh, the value of a, such a king and ruler is inestimable because he's actually going to protect the people from degradation, from uh, sinful people who want to proliferate the sins. So, but there's also mercy uh, because uh, the person I call he surrendered to him. He didn't kill him, but he... Is you're going to see, is he, was, he severely restricts where he can uh, reside in his kingdom. So that's the point that uh, and previously the English, the Dutch, and other European countries, when there were criminals in their, king, in their country or their kingdom, they would banish them to islands like Australia was the island where the British would banish their criminals. <laughs> and uh, and the, the Dutch and the uh, 
Spanish also did the same thing. So uh, now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's actually a good thing. You want to you want to protect your people from uh, unsavory, uh, uh, you know, let's say exploiters and 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 uh, dacoits and criminals. So uh, even with a one or two strikes against them, they would export them, uh, they would exile them to islands like Aust uh, Australia and other islands and keep them away from the, the people in general. They should do this again. They, they do have an island like that off the coast of uh, Washington State where they uh, force sexual predators to stay even after their prison time is over, if they if they estimate that a person is, is a congenital, uh, unremorseful uh, predator, uh, they actually break their own laws and they they'll, they'll exile him to this this island off the coast of uh, Washington State. And that's a good thing because there are some people who cannot correct themselves. And, uh, and but you know, they have to be evaluated to, to be that severe of a predator. Okay, so these are some points in this verse today. Uh, and unless people know that they're being watched always when they're breaking rules of society and breaking rules of spiritual life, uh, they feel secure and, and continuing. But if there is constant vigilance, then it's harder for them to uh, engage in uh, unsavory activity, activity. So the vigilance is something that the whole society has to be engaged in. So that to protect, especially the most vulnerable people, which are elderly persons, women, children, and of course cows also, and, and animals. <clears throat> so these are some points. Are there any questions about this purport? No, it's not complete com forgiveness. Maharaj does not give him free reign to go anywhere in the kingdom. It sounds like it from this verse, but later on you'll see that uh, he's strictly restri re uh, restricted in his movements. He, he can only stay in those places where people hoard gold. So, and see, that's a significant point because Wherever gold is hoarded, then the four pillars of sinful activity will take place. That is, uh, as gambling, illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating. Like, let's say, I, I know you don't do this, but let's say you go to Las Vegas, right? And you walk into a casino. Now, what's happening in that casino? First of all, there's gambling. That's 100% sure. Right? There's also liquor. Mm -hmm. There's also meat. And there are also prostitutes. Mm -hmm. right? So to walk into the Taj Mahal casino, <laughs> this looks like the Taj Mahal, right, in, uh, in uh, Las Vegas, that could be one of the dumbest things a person could do. Not only devotees, anybody, because... It's like a vacuum cleaner of money. You know, they, they put the vacuum cleaner into your pocket. All your money goes out, right? And the whole thing is planned to take your money away and, and to break the regulative principles. 
So to go into such a place is like uh, what you call fool's paradise. Right? So therefore, uh, yeah, in fact, let's, it says here, uh, Maharaj Pariksit, thus being petitioned by the personality colleague, gave him permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter were performed. Okay, that's the next second uh, two verses next. So, uh, he gives him permission to stay in places like that. Then you know what he does, though? He goes around his kingdom, and his kingdom is the whole world at that time. And he makes sure that there's constant fest Krishna conscious festivals, kirtans, and temples, and, and spiritual activity, so much so that no one engages in those things. Drinking, prostitution, gambling, and animal slaughter. So it's very hard for Kali to find anywhere to stay. Right? But eventually, after Maharaj disappears, Kali, you know, does its magic. Right? And you can see today, you know, it used to be that uh, in some states, liquor stores were not allowed. And also, working on Sunday was not allowed. And also, in other words, all businesses had to be closed Sunday. This is all, this, you only go back a few years, it was like that. And then also, uh, no liquor stores, no, and there are no casinos. There were no casinos, only, only in Las Vegas. And Las Vegas didn't start a long time ago. It, it was relatively new. So there, wa there were, let's say, uh, rules to protect the people. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, uh, what do you call that, the, uh, those lawyers that fight all the time to uh, make uh, illegal things legal, the ACLU, uh, and other organizations came up to misinterpret the Constitution of the United States and to fight to permit pornography, which was also not allowed. It was, a, it, was, it, it, it was a crime to bring pornography in, uh, into the country or to promote it. And secondly, of course, there was no, no uh, abortion either. That was not allowed. And then opening stores on Sunday started they, they, they made they they broke the rules they stopped this in different states and then liquor shops before in a grocery store a grocery store could not sell liquor of any kind even beer right? but little by little all these rules were changed and then uh, there was uh, also uh, no more reading the Bible in school when I first went to school, every morning they would read the Bible. It would start the day. They canceled it. And you go down the list of all the things they canceled. It's shocking. Whereas before, they tried to protect the people. They even outlawed liquor for about 11 years. But because uh, when they did that, the uh, criminals started bootlegging liquor on a massive scale. And uh, so then... They permitted it again. So you see, there was a movement, it was mainly by the Christians, to maintain order in the society and morality in the society. And it was all turned, it was all destroyed over time. And it's still going. It, more and more things are coming out, you know. Uh, so we don't want to talk about all those things. But you see, uh, the country is not protecting its citizens. And the most vulnerable are the children, the elderly people, women, and uh, the animals, and the most vulnerable. And they're being slaughtered in many different ways through the educational system, etc. Right? So this is a problem with society today.
that the penny will have effects as given in the sutra itself. But the our effort to uh, help the society is to overcome those effects. So how do we see the balance that how do we accept that we can keep the the penny penny as effect versus what we do? Well, see, success is infectious. Success is more infectious than COVID. So if we succeed in maintaining an ideal society of, of Krishna consciousness, people will notice it. Everybody wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be free of two things, frustration and dissatisfaction and anxiety. But those are two symptoms of Kali Yuga. Even the richest guys and girl and ladies are, feel dissatisfaction and uh, anxiety. So if we have an ideal microcosmic society in the bigger society and people see it and it's genuine and, and it's spreading, so all you have to do is convince 1% of the population to become Krishna conscious and, and follow it strictly, it would change the whole society. Prabhupada says 1%. So in the Seattle area, let's, let's say there's five or six million people in the state of, of Washington. I don't think it's more than that. Well, anyway, in, in the Seattle area, it's not more than one and a half million, two million people. So, if 200,000 people become Krishna conscious in the Seattle area, the whole, whole area would change. Okay. Just like they changed all these what's called blue laws, these, these moral laws, right? No liquor, no prostitution, no pornography, no working on the holy day, and so many different things. Uh, they can be changed back. Right? You have to follow a codice, you have to, you know, celebrate Janmastami, Ram Nomi, you know. Same thing is happening in India. The same thing is happening in India. Right? So but it could change back and create a society where the people are actually protected. But right now, uh, women, children, elderly people are not really protected. And and then everybody else, those, and the animals are not protected. So therefore, there's so much turmoil in the society. Okay? Okay, well, any other questions? Yes. It would have been better to kill him. That's, that's what he's saying. But, uh, that's, uh, it would have been better if he was killed. Why? Because Maharaj Prikshit went around his whole kingdom and made sure that people were following Krishna consciousness strictly. So there was no place where it was very difficult for him to find a place to stay. Because the, it, it was a very tight society. It's just like in the time of the Ramayana, Sabari was a very young girl. She's only like 13, 14 years old. And her parents wanted her to marry a meat eater. And she didn't want to do that. So her only choice, uh, she couldn't like, like move to San Francisco <laughs> or New York or Los Angeles, right? And sort of blend in to, with all the sinful, sinful people. No. It was too tight. The society was too tight. So she had to live in the forest. And she was not able to go to school. She was by herself. And uh, 
Matanga, this, the, this guru was there living you know, with his disciples in the forest, and she couldn't even enter into the ashram. It was too strict, right? So she would go every day and clean the pathways of thorns and rocks and collect fruits and roots and leave them somewhere where the brahmacharis could find them and take them back. Finally, they s the brahmacharis spoke to their guru and they said, there's somebody in the forest, we don't know who it is, but he's doing these things and, 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 they're, and they're leaving nice fruits and roots and, and cleaning the pathways. Uh, you know. So he said, find that person, bring, bring that person to me. So they brought her in front of the guru and he recognized her difficult situation and he accepted her as a disciple. But now, he couldn't let her stay in the ashram, so he said, we're gonna go somewhere else. You stay in this ashram, and in future, Lord Rama and Lakshman will come here, and, and you give them fresh water, you give them fruits and roots, and you also tell them where they can find uh, uh, Sugriva. I think it was Sugriva. And that's what she did, and she just stayed there alone in that ashram for a very long time, waiting, and then Lord Rama came with Lakshman, and she did exactly what her guru told her, and then she asked permission of Lord Rama if she could leave, and he said yes. So she built a fire and walked into it, and then all of a sudden, uh, in the smoke, she appeared, but now she appeared as a very beautiful young lady. By that time she was rather old, right? And, and then again she prayed to Lord Rama and got his permission and she went back to where her guru was. He was on the heavenly, I think he was on the heavenly planets. And then she joined, joined him. So there's an example of how tight the society was at that time. She couldn't go and live in any city. She couldn't go anywhere. She had to, uh, the only place she could go was in the forest, in the jungle. So, uh, and, and at that time, people were happy because Lord Ramachandra protected them. And he had Ram Raja, the ideal king and the ideal kingdom. And everyone was satisfied. No one was dissatisfied. And also, he eliminated all the bad guys. Uh, uh, over, th uh, I think it's 33 million Rakshasas. He eliminated all of them. Okay. All glories to Sila Prabhupada Kijay.